Okay, so we're going to talk a lot we're going to talk a lot actually about processed foods. So this was a deep dive. I really wanted to look into this. Um Well, for one reason it's been, you know, there's been a couple of new studies that have been really well done and and it's been clear that there's additives in processed foods aside from the sugar um, that seem to be detrimental to human health. And so um, so James submitted a question and James says, what substances in, in processed foods are the most detrimental to our health? Food colorings, preservatives, sweeteners, binders, anything that keeps stuff from separating. I am unclear on what are the bigger concerns and what qualifies food as processed. So there's more than 10,000 chemicals that are allowed in food sold in the U.S. 10,000, that's a lot. Um, so uh, it's kind of eye-opening to keep that in the back of your mind when you go, oh, that, that we, we allow 10,000 chemicals to be added to our food sold here in the United States. Like how are you going to keep track of 10,000 chemicals? That's a lot. Um, some are direct additives and others are indirect additives like um, heavy metals, which contaminate food during processing and storaging and packaging, right? So so there's there are things like if you're buying a bar of dark chocolate, for example, maybe has high levels of cadmium, arsenic, right? It's not, not that those were added to the chocolate. It's just they're in the processing of the cocoa plants. You know, the cocoa plants take up these heavy metals from the soil, depending on, particularly depending on where they're grown. And processing always concentrates things, right? And so a lot of times you'll get indirect additives as well. Almost 99% of food chemicals that were introduced since the year 2000 were green lighted for use by the food and chemical companies rather than properly reviewed by the FDA. So these substances end up in what we eat thanks to the legal loophole that allows them to be in there. Um, so essentially what I'm saying is 99% of the food chemicals since the year 2000 that are in our food that we can buy in the grocery store were get in there, not because FDA directly reviewed them and found them to be safe, but because they're green-lighted for use by food and chemical companies and they're generally recognized as safe. So um, it's kind of a big difference there. The FDA, when they're directly reviewing whether or not a chemical is safe, they're, you know, they're looking at that food chemical and whether or not it's okay to consume. Um, so it's a little bit different and it's also a little bit eye-opening when you go, oh, so that's like everything, anything anything that's after the year 2000, m more or less was not even directly reviewed by the FDA. <laughs> it was just allowed because of a legal loop loophole into our food. So there's things like nitrates, um, which are found in plants, but there's nitrites. Nitrites are preservatives using cured meats. Nitrites can form... Um, Nitrosamines, which are carcinogen, they're linked to a variety of cancers, colon cancer, stomach cancer, esophageal cancer, um, and possibly even thyroid and brain cancers. Potassium bromate, this is a another carcinogen that's actually added to flour and it's used in packaged baked goods. Then there's um, propipolyparaben, which is a preservative that's also used in pastries. It's also found in some tortillas. It's been shown to cause developmental and reproductive harm. Then there's butylated hydroxy anisole or BHA. So this is another preservative that you can find in some cured meats and other few foods. Um, it's also been identified as a carcinogen. And um, again, a lot of a lot of processed meats have been linked to cancer. And it's also skewed a lot of the data when you hear about meat consumption and cancer. A large portion of that is coming from processed meats, which are different than eating, you know, a, a, a whole lean source of meat, right? So um, that's also something to keep in mind. Um, there's stuff found in like kids' food, like Pop-Tarts. It's called TBHQ. Um, that's also, it harms the immune system. Then there's titanium dioxide, so that's a color additive that's used mostly in candy, and it damages DNA, so um, it's a, uh, a mutagen, basically. 
There's brominated vegetable oil, so that's called BVO, and that's used to stabilize citrus flavors in like sodas and fruity drinks. Um, That's involved, it's been shown to cause neurological harm. Then there's the per and polyfluoroalkyls, so that's the PFAS. These are the toxic quote unquote forever chemicals. Um, Sometimes people call them like PFAS, like the PFAS. Um, They're used in a lot of like the packaging of food. So um, it's not in the food itself, but it's in the packaging. So let's say you're buying, you know, prepackaged food because you don't have time and it looks like whatever you're buying is healthy-ish, right? But the, the, the packaging itself has these PFAS in them and they leach into foods. Um, Particularly, I mean, if you're getting foods that are like soups or something that's been heated, that almost is like, it's like, it it goes like a hundredfold higher in terms of leaching a lot of these chemicals into the actual food itself. And the um, PFAS, they're they're, they're associated with increased risk of cancer, um, also associated with damaging the immune system, but really a lot of sort of emerging evidence about damaging reproductive systems. So um, there's been there's been a lot of sort of, I would say, associative studies that have linked these forever, forever chemicals to, you know, decreasing sperm um, counts, at, you know, and things like that. So um, it really, it seems to be affecting reproductive systems as well. There's also artificial colors. Now these are like, you know, red number three, 40, red number 40, yellow number five, yellow number six, blue number one. These are in a lot of different processed foods, particularly candies and pastries and things that are targeted towards cereals like children, things that children are eating. And they have been shown not only in observational studies, but like randomized controlled trials to cause behavioral difficulties in children, particularly um, ADHD. And in children that already have ADHD, they just, it like goes off the chart. Like they just get really, like it exacerbates it. So um, a lot of those artificial colors, um, they're, they're linked to, again, behavioral difficulties. And there's artificial sweeteners. So um, sucralose being one, um, th- these have been associated with affecting hormones affecting, you know, having a negative effect on uh, metabolism. And I think the International Agency for Research on Cancer recently classified aspartame as possibly carcinogenic to humans. Like this was a very, very recent thing, like within the last month or so that that was, um, that made made some headlines. And again, those aspartame, like that stuff, um, those are found in a lot of, you know, diet beverages and stuff like that. Then, of course, there's the heavy metals. A lot of those do leach in. Those are indirect um, like contaminants. And, you know, uh, sometimes they can they end up in baby foods and slow growth and development as well. So that's like there's like one class. There's one class of, of the processed foods, right? The chemicals. Now, there's also the ultra processed foods. And there was a study that was published in 2021. I think it was Kevin Hall's study that that found it 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 defines ultra processed foods as industrially manufactured ready to eat or ready to heat formulations of food so they're like not whole foods but but you know they're they're snacky foods and um you also known as junk food i guess and these are um you know even things like flavored yogurts breakfast cereals you know enriched you know, that are that are thought to be enriched with beneficial nutrients, right? Like the, these are all the ultra processed foods. And um, there's really just a lot of studies on those that they, they're, they're harmful, they're caused, they're playing a role in causing metabolic dysfunction and um, weight gain as well. So, um, and, and, and links to cardiovascular disease risk. So every, you know, everything that we talk about with like too much refined sugar or saturated fat. Well, like these ultra processed foods are doing similar things as well. Um, and so then you add, in addition, these ultra processed foods also have, you know, they have a high caloric density. So there's refined sugar and there's lots of saturated fat. And it's just everything together just makes them so much more dangerous. 
trans fats, those are now really banned, um, but like they were in foods for a very, very long time and they really adversely affect lipoprotein profiles and the risk of coronary heart disease. And then there's a lot of effects on endocrine pathways and these these are um, you know things like inorganic phosphate salts. So those are those are absorbed to a greater extent than organic phosphorus, which nat- naturally occurs in foods. And there's been observational data that have looked at serum phosphate and you know excess dietary phosphorus, basically associated with cardiovascular disease, also disruption of hormonal regulation. So, um, you know, it's, it's, it's disrupting hormonal, you know, properties as well. And um, again, affecting things like oxidative stress, arterial calcification, um, it's it disrupting endocrine function. So um, another, another big one that most people are aware of is the BPA that also affects endocrine function. So this is in a lot of packaging materials now. You'll see a lot of materials that say BPA free, but they have BPS as a substitute. Now BPS is being linked to endocrine dysfunction. So it's like trade one for the other, right? I mean, like take your pick. I think you're better off avoiding the plastic water bottles and going for something like this, you know, that's not plastic. So um, I, I raised up my Yeti container here, by the way. Uh, so, you know, it's like it's like just because something says BPA free um, doesn't doesn't mean it's off the hook. I think it just means you're trading one chemical for another. You know, BPA has been it's it's structurally similar to 17 beta estradiol. And, you know, there's been a lot of different pre- preclinical um, research showing it caught, you know, can promote insulin resistance, inflammation, uh, pancreatic beta cell dysfunction. It binds to estrogen receptors. Um, and then there's, of course, observational data as well. So there's some other compounds that are linking um, what are called UPFs. And uh, UPFs are, have been linked to cancer. Um, they're, they've got uh, also ob- obesogenic properties. So they can, they're, they're in a lot of, um, they're, li- they're like food additives. So they're, they're in, you know, again, it's one of those things to keep, keep the shelf life, keep the shelf life, right? Um, but they're, they're linked to cancer um, and they're, the, the carcinogen compounds that are formed are formed by heat treatments. So um, it makes things like acrolein, acrylamide. By the way, acrolein, sulforaphane intake increases ac- acrolein excretion through urine after like 24 hours, like by, it increases it by like 40%. So acrolein, um, is also something that is it can be formed just from like cooking food really hot at high temperatures and stuff as well but it is in this food additive the the upf so there's just all this stuff that's in processed foods that people eat that they're just not aware of and and um and i think at the end of the day you know these these continual exposures to these things day in and day out particularly for people that are eating large volumes of processed foods, I mean, once in a while, it's fine, right? You're traveling, whatever. Um, but I, I think day in and day out, it's it's really harmful in many ways um, on multiple systems, endocrine system, brain function, um, you know, our DNA and being a carcinogen on metabolism, obesity, heart disease. It just, it seems to be affecting all the systems. And, um, you know, I... It, it, it goes back to that whole paleo diet concept. I know there's so many fads that have come around, <clears throat> right? There's keto, paleo. Paleo was a big one to start, and then the keto and carnivore. And I think at the end of the day, you know, sticking to a whole foods diet, I don't like, you know, I, I think if you're just sticking to a whole foods diet, you're going to be healthy. Like it doesn't, you know, it doesn't have to be choosing one of the fad diets, but just eating you know, fruits, vegetables, like, yes, fruits, vegetables, meats, you know, poultry, um, um, fish, you know, nuts, like these are, these are healthy foods to eat. 